All right, guys. Welcome. We are back with more of the letter. Uh, last episode, we found our main character. Uh, maybe. I don't know if we switch characters, but let's just say our main character for now, Isabel, going to this empty, awesome house that they're going to be selling. So we'll find out who these people are. Rose is our realtor partner. Who is this lady? You know, the signal here is absolutely horrendous. I was in the garden earlier and couldn't even make a single Isabella, call. Isabella, I'm going to ask again. Are you really all right? What happened? I... I don't know. It's all a bit blurry. I remember I was looking for you, but you weren't in the attic. And... and there's... whoever it is. Then I must have tripped on a rug or something on oh. the way down. So does she not remember the horrid crazy sight oh. we saw last time? Oh no. Do you think someone came in while you were out? You left the main door open! We are so going to get into big trouble if something gets stolen, Rose! Perhaps it is a concussion. Who the hell is this lady? Are you sure you feel fine? We could still call for an ambulance. I could cover for you. No, I'm fine. I'm okay, Rose. I can work. Wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses, Rose. I can't just miss an opportunity. An important sale because of a minor bump in the head. An extremely minor bump. I've had worse when I was a kid. This is nothing. Besides, if I leave, you'll have to shoulder everything in the open house. Alone. And in a mansion this big? Well, there's also the part where I might lose that bonus, BRC promise, but that's completely besides the point. No, I'm saying. Rose gives me a skeptical look when I return the cold compress to her and push myself off the floor. I have to use the staircase's railing to steady myself, but otherwise I feel fine. See? I'm A-OK. -okay. The two of them exchange a worried glance, and Rose assumes a contemplative look. I bite my lower lip in anticipation if she says no. Right, you in. Okay. A smile threatens to slip out of me. If I see that you aren't feeling well, I'm taking you personally to the nearest clinic to have you checked. Clear? Clear as day, ma'am. Thanks, Rose. You insisted. But remember what I said. First sign of you looking not okay, and we're off. No questions asked. And we're off. It's just a small bump. Don't worry. You shouldn't downplay these kinds of things. It could be a serious injury for all we know. <clears throat> Suddenly, a small cough sounds against the walls of the foyer, interrupting our banter. The woman is looking expectantly at the two of us, her stare making me shrink back a little on myself. She isn't really intimidating. Well, she is. But not in a scary negative way. Far from it, actually. Her demeanor simply commands an air of sophistication and respect. In a different world, a younger me would have probably wished to be like her. <clears throat> She coughs again, lifting a well-trimmed eyebrow at me in question. Words get caught in my tongue and rose, as usual, is swift to catch my own blunders. My sincerest apologies, Mrs. Miss. Miss McCallagh. Marianne McCallagh. 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 All right, cool. Marianne McCallagh. Trally Rose Designs. Interior designer. She hands Rose her business card. The words interior designer catch my eye before my partner flips it over. Oh. Probably someone interested in the mansion for its 17th century influences then. I won't hold it against her though. Despite her hearsays and remaining uninhabited for years, the mansion's original fittings and furniture had been kept completely intact and restored to pristine condition. I suppose some people find that trip to the past feeling appealing? After all, with what it offers, this place is a definite haven for people looking to live somewhere with a classic historical Ms. charm. McCullough, I'm Rose Cooper and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We're just ironing out a few things, but we'll be starting the tour soon enough. In the meantime, we've prepared some refreshments for you in the parlor while you're waiting. If you could please. Thanks. There's no need for it, though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. I thought I should check the estate before I meet with the homeowners. The confused look on Rose's face is impossible to miss when she glances at me. I return it with an equally perplexed look. And against my better judgment, I blurt out the first question that comes to mind. I'm sorry. Homeowners? I should have kept my mouth shut. A flash of irritation crosses her face, but it instantly disappears under a mask of professional detachment. Yes. Hannah Wright? I was hired by her to handle the interior design for their newly bought home. This is the Ermengarde Mansion, right? Wait, did someone buy it already? <gasps> did someone sell it? It is, but... She pauses, possibly trying to find the right words to fix the awkward situation without offending somebody. She she nudges me with her elbow. It's either we'll check with our supervisor or I don't know. 
I mean, obviously we gotta check with the supervisor, right? Those few moments had given me enough time to clear my head of any nervousness or confusion clouding it. It is, ma'am, but we weren't aware the mansion has already been sold. Ah, cool. So we got a new relationship. Marianne. Oh, she's one of the new people here. Okay, so, oh, look at that. We got a lot. So, um, this Marianne person. She likes, okay, so for so far, she enjoys, um, let's say, professionalism. So, hey, instead of saying, I don't know, we went with a simple, awesome line. Hey, we didn't know. We're going to check with our supervisor. So she likes that. Got to keep that in mind. And you know, the really important thing about interactive visual novels is learning people's personalities so you can kind of, you know, go the path you want. I mean, obviously, it's not always 100%, but getting to know people, always fun when something bad happens to them. Or they leave, or something crazy, personal change happens. What do you mean? I almost flinch when she turns her gaze on me, but I stand my ground. Besides, it isn't like I haven't dealt with awkward situations like this before. I may screw up at times, but that doesn't mean I haven't learned a thing or two in the five years I've worked in the business. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. Today's the open house, in fact. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed for this particular property. I if you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. She nods, seemingly in deep thought after I finished. She appears to be a reasonable person anyway, given the proper explanation she'll likely understand it, just like I said. I thought something looked odd when I arrived here. <sighs> Excuse me, I think I need to make a call to my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. With a slight wave of her hand, she leaves us, presumably to double check with someone on her side. That seems to be the end of it. Both Rose and I breathe a sigh of relief. Disaster averted. I also don't miss the thumbs up she gives me for doing a good job. I can't help but swell with pride. Still, I've already prepared myself to dial the number to our Luxborn office and check, even if she didn't ask for it. I'll be very frustrated if, for some reason, an agreement had already been decided without my or Rose's knowledge. That's a whole new level of unfair. We've been working hard on this. Moments later, Miss Kala, Miss Makalka, Miss Makala, Mikala, Mikala, Mick and McDonald's returns, looking at Fish frustrated, but an apology clearing her face. I feel a little sorry for her having to go through all this trouble. There seems to have been a little misunderstanding with my client. If you'll allow it, I'd like to stay and wait for them here. I was informed they'll be dropping by for the open house today. I figured it'd be a waste to just leave after that long drive. I might as well meet him here. Certainly. You can stay at the parlor in the meantime, ma'am. I'm sure it won't be long before our guests arrive. And Isabella? I left a few documents in my car. You know where I keep those. Can you please get it for me? Rose takes a glance at her wristwatch before tossing me a set and of hurry. keys. We still got a few minutes to double check those papers. Okay, got it. Give me a few minutes. The two of them disappear behind the parlor's door. Their departure brings with it a hushed stillness to keep me company, neither comforting nor soothing. This alone, it's impossible not to think what truly happened earlier. I wish the memory isn't isn't as elusive, elusive as it normally is. Then again, Rose obviously said she didn't receive any call from me. Was it just by paranoia at work? A temporary lapse in my own mind after having heard all those tales about this place? Probably. I want to think of it as such. Better to think of it as such, so I can work in peace. Except a small part of my, med, my mind begs to differ, and if I am going to be completely honest with myself, I want nothing more than to leave this place as soon as possible. I don't want to know what's in this house and I don't want to know. The keys Rose have just handed me dig into my palm. It's jagged edges creating shallow ridges on my skin from how hard I am clutching it. It's a cursory reminder of what I still need to do and why I've taken this job in the first place. Hugging my blazer closer to my body, I exit the house to get what Rose had asked for me. Just a few more hours, Isabella. Sell the house, get the money. Jesus! Come on, game! What was that? Oh, come on, what was that? What was that about? Come on, game. A flock of people have already gathered in the mansion's front yard by the time we officially open doors. I'm not sure whether I should feel baffled or underdressed standing in their presence. Men and women of wealth and status all dressed to the nines in fancy suits and lovely dresses in varying colors compose the medium-sized crowd. Their necks, arms, and fingers are adorned with silver and gold, glinting in the afternoon sun. Some even have ridiculously fancy feathered hats on their heads. I really hope there aren't any magpies living like nearby like in the stories. Those birds will have a field day in this. They are murmuring amongst themselves, looking at the estate's vacate appraisingly, with some arguing about whose mansion has the superior architecture. 
but most of it stops as Rose calls for their attention. They don't look too pleased at being ordered around, but what can they do about it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rose Cooper and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We'll be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you filled up our sign-in forms before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I'll be guiding the ones who wish to see the ground floor. Hearing this, if you wander towards me, they are mostly old ladies who seem daunted at the idea of climbing all of those stairs. Miss McCalla also joined. How do you say your name? Miss McCallow. McCalla. McCallif. McCalla? I'm gonna say McCalla. Also joins our group. But, but what really catches my eye is the elegant as the elegantly dressed Percy approaches. It's so nice to finally meet you! When Chief Inspector Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is in town, I knew I had to get you! Chief Inspector Lee? Your confidence in my skills is very flattering, ma'am. I'm sure you won't disappoint, Marianne. Oh, you know each other? Not at all, ma'am. You mentioned something about a Marianne on our way here, darling? Oh, yes, I think I did. Ah, uh, they must be the clients she was talking about. I might have seen their faces somewhere before, some magazine or the television. I can't quite remember. But then again, most of our guests have likely ended up on the news, one way or another. I won't be surprised if these two have as well. For people who are popular though, they aren't dressed as loudly as the others, and in their simplicity, the couple stands out. The woman in particular is stunning enough to turn the heads of most people in my group, especially the men with wandering eyes. The guy standing beside her doesn't seem to mind though, and if I'm gonna be a bit bolder with my assumptions, I'll say he's basking in the attention. Both of them, in fact, peas in a pod. I'll think they are brother and sister if it isn't for their public display of affection. The matching rings on their fingers just cement that they are in fact indeed a couple. Whatever. Couple or not, what's important is we get this deal closed before the current owners can even think of canceling the listing agreement. I just hope one of the people in my or Rose's group is brave and generous enough to buy this mansion. And so, with papers in hand, I lead the way. Ah, okay, journal updated, okay. When they aren't whispering amongst themselves or going ooh and ah over one thing or another, they ask questions. From how the restoration process went to the history of the place, I answered them all, more than happy to talk about the art pieces and architecture mostly. However, I am careful not to mention anything about the urban legend. Not a good material for sales talk, even if the entire population of Luxborn knows about it. Some of the furnishings here are actually the 17th century originals all of which have undergone a painstaking restoration process just to return its original beauty. Even the glass... thing. Colorful ones. Oh, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. <laughs> glass stain? Especially that one, ma'am. It is said to be a gift commissioned by the fiancé of Lady Charlotte Ermengard. The mansion's current owners have specifically requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of the mansion. By the time I've stopped talking, her attention is already elsewhere. Isn't this place wonderful, darling? I told you it's not a total waste of your time. I don't know. Isn't it a bit too small? We might have to break a wall down to have more room. Well, I think it is just right. Don't you think so, Marianne? It is splendid, Mom. Wasn't it Marianne, not Marianne? She seems like an airhead, kind of. Not to be mean. Not to be mean, but that's what I'm just feeling so far. I don't know about this guy yet. But isn't it a little too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Never mind that. It isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. Start taking notes, though. I think I've got a few things I want changed before we move in. The rest of their conversation gets lost in the chatter of our other companions. I don't want to make any assumptions yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. Oh, please, please, please let these guys be the one. Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. Ooh, look at this place. Oh, no, there's a thing down here. We're going to end up going down there one day. Why? Oh, no, one day. <laughs> I don't want to explore that. Much like the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been put into retaining the room's classical appeal. The open hearth at the end of the room, in particular, looks amazing, like the ones I only seen in fairy tale books before, and made and mad props to the cleaning crew. Seriously, after overhearing hundreds of their complaints about the suit and tar and tar staining the bricks and how much of a pain in the arse cleaning this will be, they, they still managed to pull this off. 
Or make it look presentable at least. The highlight of the room, however, is what's underneath this hatch here. Oh, don't say anything yet. An underground wine cellar. This is the first time the guy in grey speaks up. Mr. Luke Wright. My memory supply is from the forms they signed earlier. His sudden attentiveness catches me off guard. Since the start of the tour, only his wife has shown any form of genuine interest in the place. But this time, something lightens up his, lights up his eyes at the mention of the Undercroft. What's so interesting about a basement? I really don't understand rich people sometimes. Right now, he just gives me the impression of a child who had just seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas. I've always found it cute whenever I see children act that way, my younger siblings especially, on a grown man. It's almost funny. Yes, sir. It could house around 7,000 to 11,000 bottles of wine. Truly? And the room? How was it built? The bricks that were used to build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving a constant temperature and humidity in the room. It's a good place to keep your private collection in if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition. Oh, love. Didn't you say before that you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? Perhaps you could start one here. You know we're going to need space for that, darling. And, th and this isn't big enough? If it's space you're worried about, sir, the Ermengarde Mansion sits on a 46-acre lot. There's plenty of room for it. We were told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before, too. There's a con there's a contemplative expression on Mr. Wright's face, but he doesn't say anything. Further, his wife, however, seems really pleased that he had started to show interest, if only a little. I smile to myself. I may not completely understand how these people's minds work, but I sure as hell know how to spot a buyer with sincere interest. Score. I can't wait to tell Rose. The rest of the tour goes by without a hitch. After more than half an hour, we're able to cover almost every room on the ground floor and are heading to the parlor. Funny, the first time we surveyed the property, I kept complaining to Rose how big it is. Now I can't even bring myself to care no matter how much my feet hurt. Maybe this is just my excitement over a prospective sale? Look at this place. When we reach the parlor, however, an odd feeling washes over me. It starts small. It starts off as small goosebumps on my skin. A feeling of being watched intently. Whispers in my ear and shadows dancing, lurking in the corner of my vision. Dark silhouettes that are gone when I turn to look to see what it is. A chill that settles down my spine, making me sick, and I start to break into a cold sweat. I... I can't do this. I need to sit down for a moment. The old ladies in the group have been requesting for a break anyway. If I can just... Excuse me? Everyone? We... We will be taking a 15 minute rest here before we visit the first floor. In the meantime, please help yourselves to the refreshments and snacks we've prepared. If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy to help you. I let them sit while I retreat to the quiet, to a quiet corner to recover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I've probably just caught Becca's cold. Don't think about it. I'm left alone for a good while. The same words spilling out of my lips in a silent prayer. <gasps> oh shit. Until a hand taps my shoulder. Hello, you there? Y yes, ma'am? Oh, look at you. Having to show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting. Not a problem, ma'am. I'm just doing my job. What a hard worker. Anyway, Isabel, right? Isabella, actually. But yes, what can I help you with, ma'am, right? Please, just Hana. Call me Hana. Hana, right, and Luke, right. I just wanted to ask, how soon are we able to move in? My brain completely stops. The sick feeling plaguing me is suddenly gone, replaced by utter bewilderment. Is she being serious? She looks at me expectantly as I struggle to come up with an answer. Wait, ma'am, I... You see... But we haven't even negotiated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. A sale would be great and all, but... She stops me from speaking any further, putting a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, with her tight smile, she looks as though if she have tasted a particularly sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. And, just between you and me, this place is better off with us than with some old lady who will probably just fill it up with cats. Hmm. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am, Hana. 
I'm sure there's more than enough space here if you want pets. Perhaps I'm still not feeling well, but really, what's wrong with cats? More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already? Well, I'm more of a dog person. But you see, this is going to be a gift to my darling. It's going to be our anniversary soon. And it would be so wonderful if you can secure its purchase for us. Why, I can even offer something extra if you help us out with the paperwork. I... we Oops. actually have a process for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary or appropriate. And just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here? Leaving me and our lovely interior designer to talk here by ourselves. <laughs> what would the people think, darling? Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if she could help me with the paperwork. I struggle not to wince when her nails dig into my shoulder. I can't help but send an imploring look at Miss Kalaha and Miss McCalla, who only gives me an apologetic smile and a shrug. Uh, uh, yeah, I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out. She wastes no time in taking the papers from my hand and shuffles through the bunch. Oh man, Rose is going to be so angry at me for letting her do that. Wonderful. And Marianne, I'd really love to talk to you about those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, ma'am. But I really hope that this time... Excellent. Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Hmm. Isabella. Right, right. It's a lovely name, Isabel. Ugh. It's Isabella. Yes, that's great. We'll be more than happy to put in a good word to your superiors too, and... What's this? A look of confusion and disgust is apparent on her face. Turning to her husband, he merely shrugs in reply. Is that the piece of paper that says help That's, me? That's, uh, um, an interesting work of art. Not to my taste, though. I'm sorry. Darling, buttercup. Art is a complete overstatement for this garbage. <laughs> it looks like a cheap prop from a D-list horror film. Shush, love. Let the girl do what she pleases with... Uh, what do they call this? Oh, forget about it. At the very least, it's not as... dreadful as the one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. You should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. But I'm sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. I highly doubt it is as bad as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be assured that my team will only pick whatever suits your tastes. Nothing of this chain letter sort, of course. It has to always work with a palette. I'm quite sure chain letters these days don't come in this form. It's my turn to be puzzled. What do they mean? Rose and I double checked everything earlier. Are, are the papers I handed not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong. I don't want to mess this up. But with the way Ma'am Hannah's leading the conversation, I'm afraid that's exactly what will happen if I do interrupt her. That's good to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how this place will look when she's done with it. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. A smile is back on her lips when she turns to me and hands me a strange piece of paper. I would still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Anyway, as I was saying... I don't hear the rest of what she says after that. I can only stare down at the paper, at the letter in my hands. The sides crinkle in my grip, and my breathing grows labored. Dread quickly, quickly fills my Isabella? mind. Isabella? Isabella? Are you alright? You're looking pale. I don't even notice when it rose, as well as the other group turning the mansion joins us in the parlor. I want nothing more to say, nothing more to say to that. No, I'm not alright. I want to leave this place, because I remember everything as clear as day. This letter, and that woman in the attic, it's real. The letter? I, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Careless, I've been so careless. How do I even tell them without looking that I've gone mad? Should I even tell them? You know, okay, so, so what's interesting is, like really quick, they're calling it a chain letter, and it says send this, I forgot what it was, what, send it to five people or 20 people, right? Like, the thing is though, I handed it to her and I gave her and she read it. Does that mean like a curse is on that person now or something? Or the chain letter thing is nothing. But I have to think that, you know, there is some sort of thing like I have to be giving these to people so they can be part of this. It's just what I'm thinking. So do I show or not to show? This is interesting. 
I think we don't show. If this was a movie, the character would hide it right away. I would be like, no, show them, show them. But well, let's go with the more movie kind of sense. Let's not show the letter. We don't want to look crazy. We don't want to mess this up. I, Rose, I... Ooh, relationship status. Marianne. Ooh, with Marianne, it went straight up. Wow, that's interesting. Cool. So Marianne liked that I did not show that. She liked it a lot, actually. Holy crap. Hannah, Zachary, Luke. So Luke and Hannah, I don't know why they're so far away. Okay, cool, cool, interesting. Wait a minute, let me look at that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven of us. Hmm. Hopefully they, they, they show the thing. I don't remember if it was, oh, show, show this to this many people. The words are stuck in my throat. I want to tell her I really do. But is she going to believe me? She already dismissed me earlier. It's a concussion, she said. It's not. There really is something in this house, in that attic, in that letter. It's going to go after us. Please believe me. Dear me, is Isabel all right? Ma'am Hannah's voice breaks through the haze, beginning to cloud my mind. Rose is looking down on me, worry etched on her features. I don't even notice when she has removed the wrinkled paper from my hands and pushed me down uh, to sit down on a nearby chair. From the edge of my vision, I can also make out Miss Calla, Miss uh, Makalu. Asking a passing food server for a glass of water, Mr. Wright stands in the sidelines. Although curious, he appears more inclined to watch the scene than help. They are as likely to believe me as Rose does. To everyone, whatever is in this house is just a hoax. A cautionary tale for children. Isabella, do you need me to call that ambulance? Water. She offers me a drink, but I push it away. I need to get out of here before I cause an even bigger commotion. Clear my head, take a breath of fresh air, anything to take my mind off things. No one is going to believe me anyway. No, I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Excuse me, I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. Bowing my head, I mutter a quick apology and gather my stuff to make a quick exit. It doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not. I've caused trouble and Rose can be quite unforgiving of behavior like this. I'm almost at the door of the parlor when she catches up to me. Isabella, wait! She, the apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler, eyes softer, a fond smile spreading on her lips. Hey, I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on, you didn't ruin anything. It's not like we haven't ran into any problems before. If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day. And look. She hesitates, completely trailing off before shifting her gaze down to her hands. A small gesture to stall. Her fingers are fiddling with a piece of folded paper. It's that stupid letter again. My hands stiffen, uh, stiffen when she gives it back, but I take it. Nevertheless, more as an automatic response than any desire to have it back. I'll throw it away if I can, but I have this nagging feeling that one way or another, it'll find its way back to me regardless of what I do about it. Rose, this is... you have to let them know about... I know you want us to get this sale so badly, and we've made a lot of plans on how to go about this. I mean, who wouldn't? This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like what we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of my own if I ever win the lottery, but I think... Look, here's the thing, Isabella. If we are going to do this, work on something, I don't know, this big, I need you in top shape. And the way you are now... My mind stops. What? Wait, no, I can still work. I just need to get myself together. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought, hey, it's your own body and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this, I really think you should take a break. You're... you're kicking me out? No, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere. I can see you and let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself and I honestly could use some time not worrying when you'll fall over or not. The day's not even over and I'm already feeling the stress. Please. Humor me just this once. She clasps her hands together in front of her, eyes pleading for understanding. And I do understand. 
to some extent. That doesn't mean I'll feel any less awful, whether at myself or at the unlucky turn of situation has taken. Or for her, I don't really know. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happens after. I'll even let you take the lead tomorrow. Fine. Okay. I'll step aside for now. You're upset. A little, yeah, obviously. If it's any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please don't. I don't want a repeat of the lecture I got during my first assignment. He called me a noob, and I don't even know what that means. Freaking noob. <laughs> At the memory, she dissolves into helpless giggles, in which I also join in, earning us strange looks from the guests milling about the door. Talking and laughing like this, it's easy to forget any mishaps that happened. Little things you learn to appreciate, I guess. So, are we good? I'm still not okay with it, but Rose has a point. It's better for me to step out of this one for now. I won't be able to help you anyways if I keep getting distracted like this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside or something while I wait for you to wrap things up. Please, just stay put. I insist. I'm not an invalid, Rose. You clearly have not seen how you looked earlier. It's not that bad. Color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet. Just stay here, all right? Don't even think of going anywhere. Let me finish what I'm doing here, and then I'll take you back to Luxembourg myself to have that minor bump checked. At least wait for me to call someone who will fetch you, okay? She has gone before I can voice one word of complaints. <sighs> Left with nothing else to do, I find myself drifting back to the foyer. A few visitors linger in the area, some merely enjoying the afternoon sunlight streaming through the stained glass windows. Others can be seen admiring the priceless antiques decorating the room. One group of elderlies, gathered some ways opposite of me, is occupied in a friendly banter about which one will cost more to buy. A little argument here, an occasional laughter and teasing there. I smile to myself. The conversation reminds me of what I've been missing these past few months. Rose is probably right. I do need a break. Maybe this afternoon's hangout will help? Speaking of, I should call Ash. It's a few hours early from what I've told him, but he did ask for a call once I'm done. Besides, I don't have a ride back. He offered, so I might as well take it. Or bribe him into giving me one. Not that he'll ever accept the latter. Personal convictions and all. Honestly, if there's something I find admirable in him, his tendency to, you know, his, despite his tendency to annoy the hell out of me, it's that. Well, whatever way works, the free ride is still a free ride. There's Rose's offer too. But despite what she says, I know she'll be busy for the rest of the afternoon, especially without me assisting. Bothering her for a favor as small as this is the last thing I want to do now. A couple of minutes and a few prayers asking for a decent signal light later, the call finally connects and... Shit! Bob Ash from City. Vegas, watch what? Can't Shit, how loud is this thing even? A sharp ringing fills the entire hall, disrupting the pleasant quiet that has settled. Soon enough, heads begin to turn in the search of the source, mine included. My eyes dart around the small crowd, before zeroing in on a lone crouched figure behind the same group of old people checking out the decors moments ago. He's facing away from me, fumbling with something in his hands. But I don't need to see his face to know whose back it is. Oh, I'll recognize that dumb part to anywhere. Without bothering to end a call, I march towards him. After what happened today, I'm really not in the mood to deal with this. Of all the times to Ashton Frey. What happens next is something I'll surely regret later for not having recorded. He jumps, lets out an undignified yelp, followed by his phone slipping out from his grasp. It bounces it from one hand to the other in his poor attempt to catch it before ultimately falling flat on the floor with a resounding clack. I kind of feel sorry for the phone and the floor. But it's not every day you can catch someone like Ash off guard and get a reaction. Damn his stupid detective senses. I'll take every ounce of victory I can get, no matter how small. Ha! <laughs> An awkward pause. Pa uh, awkward power passes between us. A blink. <clears throat> a cough. He makes a face. And then, in a too quick motion, he ducks and retrieves his abused gadget while a grin threatens to break out from my lips. He doesn't mean my eyes when he straightens, but a flush has crept up his necks and cheeks. In another universe, where we haven't known each other for five years and suffering through his teasing is not a day-to-day -day occurrence, chances, all, chances are I'll find that adorable, endearing even. Unfortunately, this isn't that kind of world. The way things are now, I'm already content to see him out of his normally collected disposal. Hello to you too, scaredy cats. 
I could stand to be greeted like a normal person, you know. What? And miss that look on your face? <laughs> no way. Oh man, I should have taken a picture. I am so honored you find this funny. Is that how you treat your guests? I think I need to talk to your supervisor. Talk to yourself. You aren't even a guest here. What are you doing here in the first place? For a moment, he looks like a cat that swallowed the canary, suddenly checking every nook and cranny in his phone for any damages or scratches. Seems to be a bit more interesting activity than explaining himself. Ash. I could be looking to buy a house. A mansion? Yeah, why not? Did you see the view outside? It doesn't look haunted to me at all. He's messing with me. Ashton, I am not in the mood. What are you doing here? He changes a glimpse at some point behind me. The parlor? Curious, I follow his gaze, but before I can figure out what caught his attention, he places a hand on my shoulder and turns me back to face him. I just him. finished working on something earlier than expected, so I drop by. I still don't see how his work has anything to do with why he's here. And my confused look, he drops the hand resting on my arm like he touched something particularly hot and casually rubs the back of and his I, neck. Uh, I said I'll see if I can pick you up. Turns out I can. Uh, free time and all. So are these guys like super best friends? Maybe more? Huh? So here, here I am. Uh, figured you'd still be busy and so I roamed around for a while. Oh, you should have mentioned that sooner. I was about to throw you out. Throw me? Hey, I was given a pamphlet. I think that makes me a legitimate client at least. We have a mandatory sign-in sheets for clients, Ash. I didn't see your name on it. And you can't just roam around because it says open house. Normal people actually follow an etiquette here. Right, okay. I think I'll just go ahead and... No, wait. I wasn't really going to throw you out. Rose said... Never mind. I was just about to leave anyway. Wait, what? Now? Something must have shown in my face because he pauses and gives me a large, hard stare. Large, long, hard stare. Sometimes I forget how easy reading people is for Ash, and given how often he looks as if something, everything around him is a chore. I avoid his eyes, hoping he'll drop the subject and won't ask any more questions. The last thing I want is to tell him what happened, especially the part about the letter. In fact, he's the last person on earth I'll ever think about telling it to if I can help it. Sure, he's a dependable guy, God knows how many times he's helped me even without me asking for it. But stuff like ghosts and the supernatural? He'll never believe those, even if he hears it from a friend. Maybe, if, except maybe if it's Becca. On a good day, the most harmless thing he'll do is give you a detailed explanation why those things have no chance of ever being real. At worst, he's insufferable. He'll poke fun at you at every single chance he'll get. Ash Hole. What did I ever do to him? He never does that to Becca or Zach. I can already imagine how things will go down the moment I spill a word of what I saw in the attic. Nope, over my dead body. Before it catches his attention, I shove the letter still clasped into my hand into my bed. What's wrong? Nothing. Well, let's just go. Doesn't look like a nothing to me. We still have Zach's movie tonight, remember? It's still early. And didn't you say your shift will end around five or six? What about- Hey, Isabella, wait up! A, r a rush of air greets me as soon as the main door opens. Not the usual autumn trap, but still a welcome change from the stifling, from the stifling, stifling atmosphere inside the mansion. Ash's footsteps are quick behind me, the soles of his shoes thumping hard against the polished uh, concrete in an awkward cadence as he rushes up to me. He calls out once, twice. The mansion still looms in the background, whispers, calling me back, shadows beckoning. Help me. Help me. I don't look back. Hmm. We spent the ride back to Luxborn City in a relatively quiet manner, with only the radio's disjointed hum in the background fly filling the silence. Occasionally, Ash will reach out to fiddle with it until the signal settles to on a respectable volume, but otherwise he doesn't say anything. Neither do I. However, if the furtive glances he's been sending my way is a sign, I know there's something he's been itching to ask me since we left the mansion. I keep my eyes trained on the passing scenery outside in the small hope that my feigned disinterest will dissuade yeah. him. All of a sudden, he tosses something from the small compartment at his side. It hits me cleanly on the chin before I can make a move to catch it. The small package makes a soft landing on my lap instead. Ooh, what is it? We'll find out what it is next time. I'm gonna have to end this one here. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like. It helps so much. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. I upload a lot of daily videos. We're going to continue this game. It's an interesting story so far. Um, 
there, there might be something like under tow happening like with the letter it's a chain letter right so he passed it to one person or she passed it to one person already maybe it'll go to the others and maybe all those people will be like as soon as they touch it or get receive it they will be destined to meet up in the mansion because i'm assuming like the game is gonna we're gonna end up there for sure and but who knows what it's gonna be if it's gonna be like everyone's just trying to survive uh mystery to be solved i have no clue so that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time